We're here in the heart of Burwood in Sydney's inner west. It's a melting pot of culture and diversity. And here beside me is a mural called The Last Lion. And it's just been recognised at the Australian Street Art Awards. The two artists behind this mural are Sophie Odling and Christina Huynh. They join me now. Sophie and Christina, congratulations on this recognition. Tell us a bit about The Last Lion. Yeah, so The Last Lion is a collaboration between Christina and I and it was commissioned by Burwood Council and Burwood Chinatown. Uh, and the concept behind it, we developed in conjunction with feedback from the local community and from the Burwood Multicultural Advisory Committee. Uh, when we installed this, it was also to support the Racism Not Welcome campaign that was happening in Burwood at the time. Uh, and yeah, it really celebrates all the different cultures that are here in Burwood. Christina, tell us about the process of painting this mural um, and the collaboration between you two. Uh, so with the collaboration, we initially started on a small scale, just bouncing off each other's work on um, through a, a digital artwork, uh, which was then put forward to the committee. Um, in terms of the actual installation, we had like road closures in, in place and we, we bought in a big lift um, because the grounds are uneven and yeah, we, we, it took about five days for us to paint. Sophie, how does this artwork represent the community and how does it speak to the community, the unique community here in Burwood? Well, if anything, it really celebrates the diversity that is here in Burwood, particularly at, around Chinatown as well, where you have so many cultures such as Vietnamese, Korean, Chinese, and we've really tried to represent that within the mural through the um, intricate details in the objects that we've put in there. Yeah, Christina, tell us a bit about those objects. I know there are little parts of the mural that represent different communities. So the, the mural is insta uh, inspired by a story about uh, a brother and a sister that venture through the laneways after dark um, and they witness a mythical creature, which is the last lion itself, um, which is part dog, part dragon, part lion. And it's basically, it's a creature that is symbolic of prosperity and wealth, but it's also essentially a work that's about childhood curiosity and the excitement that comes like both as an adult and as a kid when you witness lions in motion. Sophie, how, what sort of response have you had from the community here? Yeah, really positive. I think uh, when you install public art like this, um, you know, sometimes community, community may not be initially um, receptive of it but once it's installed and they see the beauty of it and what it can do for the area it gets received really well yeah and Christina just finally what would you like for people who are wandering past who see this mural what would you like them to take away from it um I hope that it is a work that everyone can sort of identify and be proud of and we you know would love if people felt joy or curiosity in itself seeing the work. Sophie and Christina, thank you so much and congratulations again. Thank you. <laughs> that work is so beautiful. Isn't it? So beautiful. So colour. It really adds to the landscape yeah. in, in Burwood and then when it lights up at night, oh. particularly spectacular. Those are the artists there, Christina Huynh and Sophie Odling. Let's get more now on street art more broadly in the Australian Street Art Awards and speak to David Gratian. He's been a judge for the Australian Street Art Awards since its inception. Good morning. And is also a lecturer specialising in events and festivals at James Cook University. Good morning to you, David. Thanks for joining us. Now, uh, we just saw the beautiful artwork there in Burwood by Christina Huynh and Sophie Odling. You've been involved in judging these awards since their inception. What do you look for when you see a street art? We look for the story and we look for something that makes it special or unique because street art should actually stand out and make a statement of some sort. Mm. So it may be a statement about the local community. It might be a political statement. It might be historic, um, but it should be something that actually touches us. Mm. Let's go, th go through, David, some of the specific entries that you um, were involved in judging, starting off with this Frank Frankston Street Art Tour. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, is Benjamin Nock is the artist? Yes, they've got over 50 um, street art works in Frankston where 
they talk about the beach meeting the bush but it also meets that urban environment so a fantastic range it's growing every year all right, let's go to this next one, which is sw the Swell Sculpture um, Festival in the Gold Coast. This one's a bit different um, to what you might normally expect from street art. Yes, it's um, because it's temporary in its, in its nature. Some stay around, some move around. I was at the Woodford Folk Festival um, over Christmas and they had some of the Swell Sculptures there. Mm. It's a very artist focused event mm. um, and developing artists, new artists and existing artists to stretch a little bit more, involving local artists as well as national and international artists. So it's one of the larger events of its nature in the Southern Hemisphere. And the design is also to involve the public, that the, the, the public is the artist there as well. Yeah, the public gets actually um, involved in, in the artwork. Um, there are workshops. There are all sorts of ways to uh, fully integrate art into life and the community there. And I think that's one of the exciting things. And every year, and this is their second year as being a, a gold winner, in the mm. awards every year they just get better mm. let's finally look at constellation stories in light and light has been an interesting addition to street art that we've really seen explode in recent years yes protect projection art light art whatever you want to call it um, really is uh, an amazing art form that engages people mm -hmm. um, those of you who live in Sydney know about that with your major um, projection event there mm -hmm. uh, but uh, all over Australia projection art is taking off and it tells stories mm -hmm. um, this particular uh, series of stories constellation stories uh, in South Australian region, uh, covers five different towns and tells their local stories and looks at the connection between art, science mm. and local community mm. by using iconic buildings in each of these five regions. Mm. So, David, there we've seen some images of street art in regional and rural areas, in urban areas, along the coast as well. How can street art in its various forms contribute to a community, whether it is an urban community or more of a rural or regional community? I think the first thing is the process. The process of somebody deciding at some stage, wouldn't it be good if we had some public art, some street art? And then what happens is a journey starts of communication between local people, local artists, um, councils, tourism bureaus, all of those people start to talk together and come together to come up with a single vision of what they want. What says something about their town? What's going to enhance their region? What's going to be special about this? And it's that process that just builds fabulous community pride and community spirit. Mm. 